Rule three is titled game equipment. Typically, we only look at section two, which is titled the ball. However, rule three also encompasses the net and the markings on the net, padding on the post or standards, and the referee stand. The ball, of course, also covers the score sheet and scoreboard, the officials table, and team benches. Let's dive a little deeper into this rule. When we walk in the gym, we don't typically give the net too much thought other than making sure that it's up prior to play and the fact that we measure it for proper game height. But there are some things to consider in regards to the net to make sure that it's rule compliant. I'm not going to bore you with the specifics of the rule regarding the net, such as the length of the net or the width of the net. I mean, honestly, once we walk into a gym and there's actually a net up and it meets the criteria for playing volleyball, We've won half that battle. However, there are some specifics regarding the net that we need to pay special attention to. For instance, is the net being held taut with the standards via cable or rope? If it's a metal cable, whether it's the top cable or the bottom cable, those cables must be padded. Most of the nets in our area are attached to upright standards or poles that are anchored into the floor. In some cases, a net may be stretched between two walls with cables. In the case of the standards or the poles, we need to check the padding. The padding must be a minimum height of five and a half feet off the floor. It must be one inch thick shock absorbing material, basically foam, and in case the uprights and all tensioning devices being used. Next, we need to check the referee's platform. Sometimes this is attached to a pole Sometimes it's freestanding. In either case, the front and sides must also be padded to a minimum height of five and a half feet, basically in the same manner as the standards. There is a penalty if a host school does not pad the standards, the floor wall cables, or the first referee's platform. That penalty is the match shall not be played. If this happens, call Mary. Quickly, we also check the height of the net for play. In a girls' match, that height shall be 7 feet 4 one eighth inches, and for a boys' match, that should be 7 feet 11 5 8 inches. We measure this to the center of the net. The net measured at the end shall not exceed the heights by more than 3 quarters of an inch, so we get a little leeway there. When we check antennas on the net, we see all kinds of different methods of attaching them to the net. We see sleeves, brackets, and sometimes even tape. Let's do our best here. First, we need to make sure that we have a red and white or orange and white by rule antenna, that it's connected to the top and bottom of the net, and that the antenna is in alignment with the outside edge of the sideline. If you're using an antenna that's in a sleeve, and that sleeve is the same width as the sideline, that sleeve needs to be in alignment with the sideline and the antenna on the outside edge. There is an unwritten rule regarding the antennas about placement. The antenna closest to the R1 should be to the left of the R1, and the antenna closest to the R2 should be to the R2's left. This places the antennas on opposite sides of the net. Something I see a lot of referees fail to do is to actually check the referee stand. There are many variations of referee stands, some that attach to the pole, some that are freestanding, and some that actually have a height adjustment. We need to do a safety check on this so that we have a safe and stable platform to conduct our referee duties. I've actually fallen out of the referee stand twice in my career. Once was at a USAV event in Pennsylvania where only a few people that I know saw me fall. The second was at Princess Anne High School during a boys match. It was a heated match, and earlier I had asked the players to adjust the referee stand so that I had the proper height to referee the match. The boys evidently failed to secure a safety pin in one of the legs. In the middle of a rally, the referee stand collapsed to the right and I went falling backwards. Luckily, I was athletic enough to do a tuck and roll, land on my feet, and earn myself a 10.0 dismount to the applause of the crowd. Case in point, check your referee stand. By rule, the home team should provide competition volleyballs, and we need to check these volleyballs before we enter them into play. 
We do this by making sure that the ball is either genuine or a simulated smooth leather, that it has 12 or more basic rectangular shaped panels, and that all these panels are either a solid white, yes, we can still use a solid white ball, or have a maximum combination of three colors. If we have a colored volleyball, we need to make sure that at least one third of the ball is solid white. Of course, we check the ball is inflated to 4.3 to 4.6 pounds per square inch of air pressure. And finally, we make sure that the volleyball includes a National Federation of High School authenticating mark. We don't commonly think of the score sheet, the scoreboard, the officials table, or team benches as game equipment. But according to this rule, they are. So we need to check them before we begin our match. We need to make sure that we have an ample amount of score sheets to include a deciding set score sheet. We like to use the Eastern Officials Association score sheet, which gives us ample room for lineups, scoring, warnings, penalties, disqualifications, etc. The green book or green score sheet is adequate and that is allowed. A visiting team can maintain a second score sheet at the officials table if they'd like. But remember, that is not the official score sheet. Although, we may need to use that to fix a score sheet problem. A rule, believe it or not, is that a scoreboard should be visible to spectators, officials, and teams. We need to check the officials table, that it has adequate room for our score, our lead road tracker, our timer, etc., and that it's placed properly on the opposite side from the first referee and far enough away from the sideline. And then we also need to check our team benches. Again, they need to be a minimum six feet from the sideline and no closer to the scores table than the extension, extension rather of the center line or the attack line. Now, there is a penalty when it comes to this game equipment. Now, unlike a net standard or a referee stand that's not padded, we can still play the match if we have an improper condition regarding team benches, officials table, or scoreboard. Rules 1, 2, and 3 basically have us tackling pre-match responsibilities as an officiating team. We're checking the playing surface, overhead clearance, non-playable areas, we're checking equipment, and we're ensuring that the court is ready for play. This should be the responsibility of the entire officiating crew. By working together as a team, everything will be taken care of correctly before the match. This also prevents having game-delaying situations during the match, which might make us look foolish in our responsibilities as referees. A little extra pre-match care can prevent unnecessary embarrassing issues.